Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to introduce mixed strategies in game theory. Now I should say this video is not going to get into the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium stuff. This video is more just setting the scene, but I have got some videos on mixed strategy Nash equilibrium planned. So check the description if you want to go straight to that equilibrium stuff and I'll post links there. I should also say I do strongly suggest being confident with the more rudimentary theory before attempting mixed strategy stuff. So I'll link to some videos up on the right hand side here and also in the description that's good background if that's what you need. Great, now for this video the first thing that I do want to do is just to distinguish between mixed strategies and pure strategies. Now, pure strategies is the more rudimentary theory. It's the theory that game theory is usually introduced with in your textbooks and courses. In pure strategies, our player strategies are only ever played with complete certainty. So in our common kind of two by two matrix, and I'll put up an example, something like this. Here we have two players, they have two actions each, they both can either go up or down, and these actions correspond to their two possible pure strategies. They can either play up or play down. When we start to allow for mixed strategies, we're going to allow our players to randomize between their possible pure strategies. And I'll talk a little bit more about randomization in a little bit. For now, we can take this to mean that there's going to be a probability attached to each of our players' possible pure strategies. So in this case, we could say, you know, player one is going to play up with some probability, I'll just say probability R, and down with probability one minus R. Player two can play up with probability, let's say Q, and down with probability one minus Q. Now, a really good question at this point is, why would we want to do something like this? Why do we need to extend our theory of pure strategies to include mixed strategies? So to motivate mixed strategies a little bit more, let's just imagine that you are a soccer player and you're kicking a ball towards a net where there is a goalie. Now, in a very simple model, we can model our kicker as having two pure strategies here, either kick to the left or kick to the right. Now, remember in these models, our players are choosing simultaneously, they're not repeating their interaction, and they have complete information. So everyone's payoffs and the game is common knowledge. But the whole point of the interaction between our kicker and our goalie is that the kicker is really trying to outmaneuver the goalie in this interaction. They are trying to kick in such a way that our goalie doesn't expect so that they can get the ball into the net. That's a really central feature of this interaction. So if we allow for mixed strategies in our model here, if we allow our kicker to kick left with some probability, let's say probability Q, and then they would kick right with some probability one minus Q, well now we've included in our model this element of uncertainty that our kicker would like to have around their direction of kick. And this might give us a better model for this sort of interaction. And other sorts of situations that you might see listed as, as good candidates for being modeled as mixed strategies might include things like poker, other card games, other sports games, maybe chess. And just to run through the example then, let's say that if Q is equal to a half, then one minus Q would be one minus a half, so also a half. And so our kicker then will kick left with probability a half and right with a probability a half. Now you might ask, given that we are in a simultaneous one-shot game here, what does this actually mean? Like what do the probabilities actually mean? And a very common, I think the standard story is about randomization. So since Q is equal to half in this case, this basically means that our kicker will randomize equally between kicking left and kicking right. And to do that, maybe they could flip a fair coin and they would say heads would be kick right and tails would be kick left. And whether they actually end up kicking left or right is up to the coin. It's up to this random process. That's why we talk about randomization in mixed strategies. The only thing that our kicker is choosing here is what probability to attach to kicking right or, or kicking left. So if our player chooses, chooses different probabilities, their randomization tool would need to reflect that. So if we chose uh, kick right with a third and left with two thirds, they would need a weighted coin or something like that. Now, I will say some students get worried about this randomization aspect of mixed strategies. They think that, you know, that's not really how we make decisions. 
And I will say here, there has been debate in the recent past about the exact interpretation of these probabilities. I'm not going to go through it here though. It is a bit of a wormhole, but I am aware that some of you might be worried about this. So I'll put some discussion and links in the description to places where you can read more if you're interested. And if there is enough interest, I could do another video where I can briefly describe the three perspectives that we might take on these probabilities. Uh, you can just comment below if you would like that sort of video. In any case, this all means that when we are thinking about mixed strategies, the choice that is being made by our players in our game will be the choice of what probability to play each of their possible pure strategies. And so when we describe a mixed strategy, we're just going to describe the list of probabilities that a player is associating with each of their possible pure strategies. Now I'll go back to our original screen because there are some conditions we need to understand around these probabilities. Firstly, when we play mixed strategies, all of our probabilities, as all probabilities must be, they really must lie between zero and one inclusive. And in our example here, we meet that requirement if Q and if R, if they both lie between zero and one inclusive. If these conditions hold, both one minus Q and one minus R will also lie between zero and one inclusive. Now it must also be the case that our probabilities associated with each player, when we sum them up, they must add up to one. And this just makes sure that our model fully describes every possibility open to our players. And so this means that, for instance, for player one, once we choose R, which is the probability attached to playing up, this really necessitates the probability that attaches to down being one minus R, since R plus one minus R is equal to one. So that's why you've seen this kind of R one minus R combination and for player two, Q one minus Q combination. That's just to make sure that our probabilities add up to one. If we changed our game so that our player two had three possible pure strategies, so up, middle and down, this condition would look like this. You know, player two could play up with probability Q, middle with probability P. And so the probability attached to down would be the difference between one and Q and P. So one minus Q minus P. So this, this just makes sure they all add up to one. Now, the last thing about these probabilities that I wanted to talk about is that our theory on mixed strategies can describe pure strategies as well. So we say that mixed strategies really subsumes pure strategies. And this means that we don't really need a theory on pure strategies. We don't need that to be a separate theory. We can just use mixed strategies. So in this game down here, for instance, if player two wanted to play the pure strategy up, that's really just to assign a zero probability to middle and down and a probability of one to up. So Q would be equal to one and the probability associated with middle and down. So P would be zero and one minus Q, which is one minus, minus zero would be zero as well. Likewise, if player one wanted to play the pure strategy down, we could just set R is equal to zero. This would render our probability of playing down equal to one minus zero, so one. So pure strategies then is really just a limiting case of mixed strategies when we are assigning a probability of one to one of our possible strategies. So that's really, that's kind of the background to mixed strategies. The next thing that you're probably interested in is mixed strategy Nash equilibria. And I'll just use the last bit of this video to describe my approach to this going forward, because I think it's useful to, to lay everything bare. In the literature, you will typically see a mixed strategy Nash equilibria described via two sorts of games. The first sort of game is one where there is no pure strategy Nash equilibria. And games like Matching Pennies, for instance, there is no pure strategy solution, but there is a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. And in games like this, that equilibrium is pretty intuitive. So games like Matching Pennies are great if you want to see a game where the solution to the game is intuitively one that involves mixing your strategies. The other sorts of games that you will see though is, is games like Battle of the Sexes, which has both a mixed strategy and pure strategy Nash Equilibria. And these games are really good to go through because the students then can work out the pure strategy Nash Equilibrium and the mixed strategy Nash Equilibrium kind of next to each other 
and you can see very clearly the commonality between them. And that can be really good for students. It kind of consolidates uh, the theories together. But the problem with these games is that the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, at least I find, for these sorts of games, which already have a pure strategy solution, they tend not to be as intuitive. So as a teacher kind of going forward, both sorts of games has explanatory benefits when we're thinking about explaining mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So my plan for teaching mixed strategy Nash equilibrium then is really two separate videos. One will be matching pennies or a game like matching pennies and the other will be battle of the sexes and it kind of gives you two different perspectives on the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So check the description for updates when I finish those videos. In any case, I hope that this video helped. Thank you so much for watching my stuff and I hope you guys are well. Have a good one.